Hi. So you'll have to excuse, there might be some noise around here. Uh, there's virtually no production value to this video whatsoever. I'm shooting it from my cell phone. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of questions that came in about 201 stainless steel. And I mentioned before that it is austenitic, or it's in the austenitic family, which usually means uh, it's non-magnetic. And if you look at all the books and everything, they would say it's non-magnetic, and all of austenitic stainless steels are non-magnetic. But they're not. And the question then becomes, can you identify whether or not you have 201 versus 304 on like an exhaust system or a manifold or anything else like that that I mentioned before? So let's kind of give you a rundown of some of the different ones here. That is a relatively strong holding magnet, right? It's enough to move my table around, you know, but it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt if I drop it on the table, right? Very magnetic, right? This is 304 grade stainless steel. It's verified 304 grade stainless. It's made in the United States, processed the whole works, right? So we know that it's, I got the, I got the mill uh, reports and everything else on that stuff. Uh, this wire here is 308, the stuff we use to weld with. This is 303 stainless. It's what they usually use to uh, machine parts with is grade 303. This is Chinese grade. Uh, got it off of eBay, whatever the case is, Amazon, the same stuff. It's 201. This is also 201 stainless. And in the center section there, I made a patch using 304 stainless, right? So let's take our magnet and let's try these out. Let's see what we actually get out of it. So I'm going to isolate this 304, just so that way it doesn't get any kind of attraction or pull from the actual table itself. So magnet, nothing. Nothing, right? Now the tricky part here is in this bend, the molecules of the metal itself are rearranged slightly, right? They're more compressed, they're more dense. So in a bent section, you have a tiny, 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 tiny bit of pull to it. Not enough to really make the magnet stick or stay. If I dropped it, it would hit the table, but there is a slight magnetic pull to it. That's gonna happen in areas where molecules of metal have been restructured. Here's some wire, non-magnetic. 303 stainless, slight magnetic pull. Not much, give it a shake and it falls, right? But 303, mostly everybody knows it is verified, slightly magnetic. Cheap Chinese stuff, 201 stainless steel, magnetic, right? Not a whole lot of magnetic, but magnetic nonetheless, right? This manifold is also 201 stainless. The magnet sticks to it all day long, right? Name a section, it'll stay, right? This section that's in the center of it where I made the repair, 304 stainless, and it always wants to jump and pull over to the 201. But by itself, it's not magnetic. If you can get the magnet in this really tight, small space, which is hard to do, see, not magnetic, but it wants to pull over the 201. Now, what makes 201 different than 304 and why it still falls in the austenitic family is that they both have chromium and nickel. It's just 201 literally has like half the chromium and nickel as 304. Wait, this is 8% uh, nickel. This is usually like 4 to 5% nickel. So that makes it literally half price and why so many stainless parts are actually technically stainless. They're still austenitic stainless steels are half the price. That's very simply why. So... Now you kind of have an idea. If you have a cheap exhaust or you need to identify it, yes, theoretically, you can put a magnet up to it and it might stick, it might not, it might hold. You never really know. If it's in a bend, that's where you want to test it because if it's 201, it's going to stick and it's going to hold and the magnet will probably stay on it. So there's your answer. You can technically test it if you have a good magnet, but either way, they're all austenitic stainless steels. They're all in the same family. They all weld virtually the same. It's just the 201 is half the price and you know because it has half the stuff in it and they don't last last as long or anything else like that so technically speaking if you were to go 304 and above then yeah the, the magnet's not going to stick to it anything 303 and below stronger attractions with lower numbers okay so hopefully i got all the food out of my teeth i am uh, in the middle of eating lunch and editing the video that you're watching right now and i realize there may be a little bit of confusion in what i'm saying here and that's why i usually have a script to follow but nevertheless what it basically boils down to is, can you identify that stainless is a different grade than a non-magnetic grade with a magnet? Yes, and that depends on the actual pull of the magnet, how strong the magnet is, if it's good, whatever the case is, right? Uh, but can you specifically identify the grade based on the pull of the magnet or just because it is magnetic? 
No, you cannot say that just because the magnet sticks at this calibrated feeling level or whatever the case is, that it's 201 or, you know, 217 or whatever, you know, 303. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can't say for certain exactly what grade of stainless that is. You need one of those, you know, laser analyzing pew pews that, uh, that does all that stuff. So I hope that kind of clears anything up here. You can say that this is not 304. Like if you... You know, if you bought a cheap exhaust and they said it was 304 and the magnet sticks to it, it's not 304, right? So there, that, that, hopefully that, that kind of solves it out. I'm going to finish eating. If you haven't seen these bumper boats behind me, they're basically done. They're ready for the water. I've been working on them for like two friggin' months now, and I want to hurry up and finish all this stuff so I can get out of the water and go have a blast with my friends. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that clears it up. If you've got any more questions, give me a shout. I'll see you all later. Ha, ha, ha.